Hi, I'm Glenn Dewis. Welcome to episode 43. Now, before we dive over into this particular tutorial, just a reminder, in the last video, I showed you how you can create fake sunbeams all by using a gradient. Now, if you haven't seen it already, that's episode 42. Now, while you're there over on the YouTube channel, if you haven't already, make sure you click on the subscribe button, and that way you're gonna get to know whenever any new content has been posted that comes out each and every week. And also let other people know about this channel as well. It's the support from you guys just by clicking on that subscribe button and letting other people know that helps this channel to grow. Have I kind of said that enough now? Just click on the subscribe button. Anyway, getting back to this week, I've got a tutorial in Photoshop that shows you how you can create fake rain all by using a brush. Let's show you now how we do it. Okay, so as you'd probably expect, within Photoshop, there's lots and lots of ways that we can actually create rain. Sometimes we can use noise and all kinds of like blur filters. But in this tutorial, I wanna show you how we can do it actually just using brushes that have already been made. Now, first of all, where do we get the brushes from? Well, you're gonna go to the, uh, go to the web. You're gonna go to a website called DeviantArt, and you can see the address here in the upper left, deviantart.com. And when you get to this website, we have a search box in the upper left. And all I'm gonna do is type in rain brushes and then press the search button. When you do that, you're gonna be presented with pages and pages and pages of all kinds of different rain brushes that have been kindly made by other people. Now, the only thing I'm gonna suggest when you choose a brush from here is that you read the creator's terms and conditions. You might find that some of the brushes, the creators don't really want you to use them on images that are for sale, or that actually you go to sell later on, or they actually might stipulate that in some, uh, whenever you post these images online, once you've used their brushes, that you just give them a little bit of a credit so that they know where the brushes came from. However, once you've actually downloaded a brush, you're gonna go back to Photoshop, and then you're gonna go to your brushes in the upper left here. So we choose a brush, we then go to the upper left, and then we get the brush choices here. But in the top right hand corner, there's a little cog. When we click on that, we choose load brushes. And then all we do then is navigate to where it is that we downloaded that brush off DeviantArt or wherever you've got it from. We click on that and then we click open. Now when we do that, the brushes are then going to, going to appear at the bottom of the screen here within the brush choices that you have just down at the bottom. However, the next time that you go to reset the brushes, they will no longer be there and you won't be able to find them very easily within this kind of menu of brushes that you've got already built into Photoshop. So the best thing you can do at this stage, once you've installed them, is then click on the button just to the right hand side here to get the brush presets. And at the bottom of that dialog box, right in the middle, there's three little buttons we've got here, choose the middle one, we get the preset manager. Now the brushes that you've just downloaded, you're gonna find that they'll be the very, very last options that we have just at the end of this kind of big long list of brushes. Now you can see these ones say 2000s and there's a couple of ones that are numbered 1972. So I wanna put these now nice and safe and so I can use them later on within Photoshop. So I'm gonna click on the one on the far left, I'm gonna hold down my shift key and then click on the one on the far right. Then I'm gonna to go to save set and I'm gonna rename these to something like rain, we'll just keep it to rain. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna navigate to where Photoshop is on my computer. So I go to applications, I'm using a Mac. Then I double click where it says Photoshop. Then we've got the presets uh, button here or presets folder even, and then within there we've got the brushes. Now this is where all the brushes are that I'm using within Photoshop. Once I click save, then I close Photoshop and restart it. The next time I open it and go to use brushes, I'm gonna find those rain brushes here within this menu choice. And you can see earlier on, I've installed some rain brushes just here. So that's how we actually install them for, you for, uh, for future use. Now how do we actually use them to create realistic looking rain? Well, that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, so this is the picture we're gonna to use to create the rain on it, but you can see at the moment we've already got it. That's because this is the, the final finished result. So I'm just gonna to go to the layer comps and turn everything off just so that we can see no elephants, but we can see the rain effect just on its own here. So that's what we're gonna create. Now there's lots of ways we can do this, but now that we've got the brush installed, I wanna show you how I'm going to use it. First of all, we're gonna create a blank layer. Then I'm gonna make sure that over on the left-hand side in the toolbar, my foreground color is black. 
black. Now, the reason I like black is because it makes it easier for me to see, first of all, when I put the rain in, and then I change the color of the rain later. So I'm gonna go to my brushes, and then go to the top left and choose the rain brushes that I actually installed earlier on. So I'll just click on one of these. We'll go for one of the ones that's called 1972. Then all I'm going to do is increase the size of the brush. We're going to go really big here. We can see in the upper left hand corner over here is 3700. This is a really big brush because the brush is a square one and I need to make it fill the whole of this picture. So what I'm going to do is increase it to 3700. I shall press down on the right hand side and I'll zoom in you can see there's just a, a brush stroke that's been added in. Now I need to go to the other side of the picture so I'll just move my brush over and press again. So now we can see the brush covers the whole of the image now like so. Once I've got it pressed down I can see where that join was. All I then do is go to image and adjustments and invert. So it turns it from black to white. So now I can actually see where everything is nice and clear. That's purely something I like to do because it makes it easier for me to line them all up. Okay, so the trick here then is to actually have depth within the picture. What we don't want to do is just have one layer of rain because that's going to be very, very two dimensional. We need this to look as if it's way, way in the distance, then kind of level with the uh, object or the person or the animal that we've got in our picture, and then we need it closer to us. So I'm going to create three copies. So we've got one layer already. I'm going to press Command J once and again. So now I've got three copies of this rain layer. Now the first one, I'm going to double click on there and call back. Then I'm going to click on the middle one and call that middle. And the upper one, I'm going to call that one front. So let's just turn off the front one and the middle one, and we'll just click on the back, because this is the rain that's way, way, way in the back of the picture, way in the distance. So this is gonna be really, really small. So I'm gonna actually keep it to the size it is at the moment, but I'm gonna go into add some blur. So I'm gonna go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. Now you could add a smart filter here so that you can actually control the amount of blur, but just for speed, um, and it's because it's pretty basic, I'm just gonna kind of keep it just on a basic blur on directly onto the layer. Now the amount of blur I add in here, I'm going to maybe go for something around about six, something like that. And that's purely uh, just by sight. There's no kind of like magic numbers here. It's exactly how you want it to look. Just dial in the number that you want. So we can see we've got quite small rain here, but it's blurry, which means it's way, way in the distance and I'll click OK. Now the only thing to remember at this point is we've got our grass in the foreground. Now this rain is supposed to be way in the distance, so we don't want any of this rain in the distance to be on the grass right at the bottom of the picture because that just doesn't seem to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a layer mask, making sure still that our brush, sorry, our um, foreground colour is black and I'm going to get a gradient and we'll just increase the opacity so it's 100% and I'm going to go for foreground transparent and click OK. I'm going to put my cursor at the bottom of the screen, click and drag upwards just, just above the horizon line on the grass and then let go. So what that's going to do is it's going to remove the grass off the bottom part of, sorry, it's going to remove the rain off the bottom part of the grass here. So it still looks way, way in the distance. So that's the background rain. The next thing to do is the middle section of the rain. So I'm going to click and turn that layer on, but this needs to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go to edit and free transform to bring up the transform handles. And then at the top of the screen, we've got the width and height. And in between the two, there's a little chain link icon. Now if I click on that, when I put my cursor over the W or the H, you get this little scrubby slider. And when I drag it to the right, it increases the size. But that's going to increase the size of the uh, width and the height all in the same proportion. So I'm going to go to around about, say, 150-ish. Because this rain is now getting closer to the viewer, which means it would be slightly bigger. Once I've done that, we'll click on the tick to commit it bring it in closer. Now this rain is going to be closer to us. It's also going to be maybe in line with our subject, so it's not going to be quite as blurry as the rain in the background. So I'm still going to add some blur. We're going to go to Filter, Blur and Gaussian Blur, but I'm only going to do maybe around about one or two pixel radius here. I'll go for one just for now. 
and then click OK. Now there's still this rain down at the bottom here. We don't want the rain in the middle of that picture to be right in the foreground, so we do need to remove that as well. So I'm going to add a layer mask. And again, I'm going to get a gradient, but this time, rather than using the gradient at 100% opacity, I'm going to take it down to around about maybe 50-ish, something like that. And then again, I'm going to click at the bottom of the picture, drag up to just above the horizon line, and then let go. So that's going to remove the rain, but not completely, just so that we're still starting to add in this element of depth. And we can see that from the layer mask over here. In fact, if I just hold down my Alt or Option key, click on the layer mask, you can see that we've just got this kind of like grayish area here where it's removing the rain, but not completely. Okay, let's just hold down the Alt or Option key, click on the layer mask one more time to bring us back to the view of the picture. Now, now the final thing we'll do is just add one more of these kind of like layers of rain. So we're going to turn on the front layer now. And this one we need to make really big because this is the rain that's much, much closer to the viewer. So again, we're going to go to the edit and free transform to bring up the transform handles. At the top of the screen here where we've got the dimensions, we've got the width and the height where it says 100%. I'm going to again click on that little chain icon to link the width and the height. So then when I click down on something like, let's say, the H, I get my scrubby slider. I drag to the right, it then increases the size of the width and the height all in proportion. And this one I need to bring way up. And I'm going to go for, I don't know, maybe 260, 270, something like that. Because this needs to be really, really big. And now because it's really close, we need to blur it. So we're going to go, oh, first of all, we need to commit that. So we'll press the little tick down or press enter just to commit that transform. Then we're going to go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. Let's just go to Gaussian Blur just there. And this one we need to blur quite a lot. Let's just bring this in just a sec. And I'll probably take the blur to around about a 10 pixel radius. So it is quite blurry. I'm going to turn that on and off, off. There we go, something like that. OK, and then click OK. And once that's done its little transform, and there we go, fantastic. Now I'm going to leave the, the, uh, the rain showing up on the foreground here because this is the rain that's really, really close. And I'm going to just uh, put these three layers of rain into a group. So with the upper one selected, hold down my shift key, click on the bottom one. Then we'll go to the flyout menu at the top of the layers panel, new group from layers, and we'll call that rain. And at this point now, because we're all in a group, we can control the opacity of that group to decide how strong we want that rain to be. So the trick here is all about building in layers. Rain way in the distance, then in the middle ground, and then in the foreground. And actually, the more layers that you create, you're going to add that more kind of an element of depth and realism. But there you go. Let's, uh, let's go back to the final image here. Let's go to our layer comps, turn on the final layer so you can see how that rain looked within our finished picture. So there you go, nice and simple. The only thing to remember there is about adding the depth. When I first started doing this uh, kind of rain and debris and all that kind of stuff, I would just do one layer, then I'd do another layer, just nice and big and blurred. You need to have more depth in the picture there, so add more layers. Now in this tutorial, I've just shown you three. Maybe five would be a good one, but just remembering that the ones way in the distance are gonna be a lot smaller and blurred, and as you get closer, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And the ones that are generally in line with the subject or the person or the animal or whatever it is that you're using in the picture, they're the ones that are more in focus. And then they get bigger towards the viewer, bigger and more out of focus. And that kind of helps with that depth there. It's just something to play around with, just experiment with it, but don't just use the brush as it is on a layer because that kind of sucks and that ain't gonna work. But anyway, like I said, make sure you click on the subscribe button. That way you're gonna know about more videos that are posted each and every week. And just let somebody else know about this channel as well. Just share it around and that's all the support I ask from you guys. But that's all for this week. I'll see you next time.